Today on Chasing the Sun, Travis Holman joins Justin Leak and PCB just in time for bull redfish. So my approach to fishing involves more of my instinct and my gut, because the whole time we fished on tour, it was about us with no information. So what we'll do, we'll fish a heavy jig head, let it fall through these bait balls, and then just start to slow wind it right under them. And I bet you we'll find a big redfish. Whoa, broken rod. Hey, the best part is he's still on there. So when we want to catch big bull reds on the surface, we're looking for pelicans. Pelican is our sure sign that redfish have pushed bait up to the surface. What? No, look at this pelican right here. He thinks he's going to eat this or something. Probably the coolest thing with fishing is that we step out of our environment into their environment. Yeah, that's like one of them Carolina redfish. Mm-hmm. Golly. That, my friend, is fun. Sun is brought to you by Island Murata and Stewart Boat Works from Platts to Fathoms. Kicker Audio, Living Loud. Pelican, built to protect. Mercury Marine. And by Z Man, the science and art of fishing. Captain Travis Holman is a tournament angler and guide based in the Florida Keys. The last time I was here was um, Redfish Cup Championships were about 150 miles to the west. I stayed here, fished around, and it's not nearly what I remember it being. It's changed vastly. And not in a bad way, it's in a great way. You know, it's more family oriented and you kind of feel like you're home when you're here. Everybody's really cool and laid back and even the tourists are super nice. Ahead of Hurricane Irma, Captain Justin Leak invited Travis to come fish some gulf waters off Panama City Beach. So my take on guides is there's two kinds of guides. There's uh, trailer and guides, which are the guides that trailer around, take their people fishing, come back, put their boat on the trailer, maybe go to the bar, cruise to the house, but they don't wash their boat every day and their routine isn't, there's really no routine to their routine. Transversely, you've got the marina guides. Now those guys are the kind of guys that if you go in the garage, they know where every screw and every bolt and every nut and every drawer is. And they're a little more kept with their <laughs> processes. They're just rigid, <laughs> in my mind, because I'm a trailering guy. And I understand we got a marina guy here. <laughs> What's happening, Travis? Good to see you, man. How are you, sir? Good. Well, we got Travis Holman here with us, very well-known Keys guide. We got him here, one of our best times of year is to fish, and we're gonna get on the water here shortly and go see what this fall fishing's all about. You know, I'm most excited about actually moving into a fall pattern. So we don't have those. We kind of have fish migration, <laughs> but we don't have fall patterns. You all have year-round summer pattern. Well, <laughs> yeah. that's what I love about the Panhandle. We do, we, we get seasons. You know, it cools off a little in the fall, and the fish respond to it, and typically uh, everything across the board from the flats to the blue water will get better in the fall. So. Bite turns on, you've got all sorts of different spawns happening. Certainly, big bait fish migrations. You know, it's a very versatile fishery. Uh, we got a beautiful emerald green water right here along the beaches, and on a north wind or a northeast wind, uh, like we've had here recently, the beach gets slick calm and just beautiful. And a lot of days, you'll have a lot of wind, and you would think, you know, hey, this is not a good day to fish, but that's not true. We can get out here on the beach and there's a lot of action. You got kingfish, sailfish, blackfin tunas, all, I mean, just, you know, within eyesight. Right? Oh, really? That yeah. tight? That's exactly right. Well, yeah. that's exciting. So, we'll go sample it and see what we got. Excellent. Let's get after it. But not until the boat arrives, time to kill a little time and blend in with the tourists. I can't 
can't figure out where to go. I'd get right up here amongst these birds and we can just shut down and get started. It's not about fishing, just fishing. It's more about making the memory that lasts forever. Big Papa. Stud red for Florida, dude. Look at that head on that thing. Wandering by your river side. I come from a wandering life Your eyes are like a river going by Ready to experience the best riding boat on the market? Isla Mirada Boat Works is revolutionizing the bay boat world, one craft at a time. Simply the purest riding bay boat to ever hit the water. Isla Murata Boat Works. Performance, speed, perfection. Upgrade to a Royal American Beach getaway and enjoy free nights, tropical welcome drinks, free beach chairs, discounts at area attractions, and more. With vacation rentals ranging from economy to luxury and hundreds of Panama City Beach condos to choose from, you can stay close to the action or far from every distraction. Just book a room. Upgrade Royal American Beach getaway. So my approach to fishing involves more of my instinct and my gut, because the whole time we fished on tour, it was about us with no information. No Tarpon Telegraph, no Panama City Beach guide chain. Nobody communicated with anybody. And if you go out and you figure it out, and you kind of, over the years, you develop the ability to see and feel and put everything together and, you know, trial and error. The self-discovery in fishing is what makes it interesting for me. Now, Justin's approach is extremely systematic. We're going here, we're gonna do this. If it's not happening, then we're gonna go do something else and we're gonna go to B spot, C spot, D spot. From, from that set of pilings straight across right here, it's like eight feet of water. Big grass flat up there. Right here, it falls off to 40 feet. It's just like a wall right here. So that's, these, and the tide's falling out. So these redfish sit right behind this wall, just waiting for us. Buffet. Man, that's it. Don't have to work for it. It's kind of interesting to watch as these guys communicate as a group of guides. The, uh, gosh, I really don't know any place in the world that communicates quite like these guys do. Hey, is that Shevin? What's up, man, it's Justin. Why ain't you commercial fishing? It's nice now. These guys, you know, they catch fish, which is fantastic. They're all about catching fish and everybody works together to catch fish. And that typically is what guiding is about in many, many fisheries in the world. I do more experiential. It's not about fishing, just fishing. It's more about making the memory that lasts forever. So when we want to catch big bull reds on the surface, we're looking for pelicans. Now you'll see other birds mixed in with the pelicans, but the pelican is our sure sign that redfish have pushed bait up to the surface. The, the pelicans are gonna watch for those bait balls to be pushed to the surface, and when they are, those pelicans are gonna bomb right into those baits. And that'll let you know if you fish around them and you look around them, you're gonna find some redfish around those baits. Now you wanna cover water and look for that happening because if you're not where that's happening, you're not catching them. So what we'll do, we'll fish a heavy jig head, let it fall through these bait balls, and then just start to slow wind it right under them. And I bet you we'll find a big redfish. I'd get right up here amongst these 
birds and we can just shut down and get started. Roger. Just doing a little sneak around on them? Yeah, because we should drift back up towards the bridge. There you go. Ah, I'm feeling more like a grouper. No, I don't think so. Oh, he's a red. But... No, you just put a heavier jig head on. On the sink too, man. That's it. On the drop. On the drop. You know, we're in 40 feet of water. We're both fishing a half ounce. And all these fish are marking down deeper. Travis puts the one ounce on, and as soon as it hits the bottom, it's so. When you come tight at the bottom is when you get that hook up. A lot of times, all you got to do is put a twitch after the sink. Yeah. Just a little think think. How often are those fish watching and watching? And as soon as it twitches, as soon as it moves, bam, reaction. Big Papa. A stud red for Florida, dude. Look uh -huh. at that head on that thing. Yeah, we need to. We, we could be anywhere in the Gulf if these big guys live. So the reason the redfish is our best inshore game fish in the Gulf of Mexico is because of their versatility. We find them on the flats in the bay, out here in the open water along the beaches, and everywhere in between. We catch them on the surface, we catch them down deep. Live baits, fly fishing, artificials, you name it, we can catch a redfish about anywhere with about any type of tackle. Yeah, that was like one of them Carolina redfish. Mm-hmm. Golly. Got him? Yeah, look at that dude. Woo! <laughs> that, my friend, is fun. Fishing's about self-discovery. I mean, it's what it is. You're exploring, they're already explored. You go out and generations upon generations have done this and they've seen it all change and grow and the schools do what they do religiously because most redfish schools are very methodical in their little troop. You know, maybe a four mile loop or a two mile loop or a one mile loop or they may come up in the water column or go down in the water column. It's all dependent upon bait, time of day, tide, moon phase. And what makes it fun for me is figuring out the puzzle. Sayonara, buddy. As a guide, we try to use every technology that we have available. Under the boat, you can see the fish in their sonar shadow on the side imaging. Whoa, broken rod. There, there we go. <laughs> Red fish. This is what we call bycatch when we're fishing at the bridge. Wandering by your riverside. I come from a wandering life. Your eyes are like a river. waters and endless possibilities. Plan your spring escape today at visitpanamacitybeach.com. So as we're sitting here under the boat, you can see the fish in their sonar shadow on the side imaging where it's casting out. They literally have come up to look right at the bottom of the boat. See them here? Yeah. Right under us. Look at those shadows. As a guide, we try to use every technology that we have available to find fish. And I tell you, I felt like, you know, 15 years ago when we got this color sonar that we could really break apart different pieces of structure that we're seeing not just one shape, we could see individual fish. I thought, I mean, geez, could it get better than this? And yeah, it can. So I see those marks, but where is that at? Like so the center line is the boat, and the black area is under the boat until it hits color, and that is the bottom, and the bottom moving left and right. See the shadow here, the sonar shadow? Yeah. It's cast out 
at an angle. We can not only see what's directly below us, we can actually see out to either side. So you got the puck sitting on the back of the boat yep. and it's throwing a 180 shadow of sonar that comes back to it. And at the angle that it catches the fish in the middle of the water column behind it, is a sonar shadow gotcha. that registers on the bottom. Gotcha. It's also how you tell how big a fish is by a shadow. So they go a little slower than we do on the flats, and yeah. they find those little indentions that are four, five, six, eight inches, a little bit deeper. Yeah. The runway's on and off the flats, and they'll focus on those little runways and pinch points, and areas that trap bait and allow for ingress and egress. Any more b big words you can come up with that I don't understand? Oh, I got the college degree. <laughs> <laughs> you guys speak in small words around here, Travis. Whoa, broken rod. Hey, the best part is he's still on there. Let me help you out here. <laughs> oh, they're with him. Stop, stop, stop. Throw over here. They're all with him. What is it? Red? Redfish, but there's a bunch with them. Get right on me. Mm, they just went the other way, huh? Yeah, of course. All right. Not there there we go. <laughs> redfish. You're going to break your rod on a redfish. Might as well, Might as well make one. it a big one and do it two at a time. <laughs> <laughs> so I lightened off my drag here because braid has like no stretch. And now I have no rod to be my shock absorber. So I'm going to fish on, on a little lighter drag. Me and Travis haven't fished together all that much, but there's certain things that just go no matter what kind of fishing we're doing, who you're with. When you got a fish coming up, especially a schooling fish like a redfish, you want to watch that fish coming up because this dude came up and had a whole bunch more with him. Now, if I would have wound this guy right up to the boat, the other ones would have probably took off. But you just want to leave them out there, away from the boat a little ways, let your partner get hooked up. And then you're fighting two instead of one. This is what we call bycatch when we're fishing at the bridge. We already caught a bunch of redfish, and now we're trying to do a little tarpon. Thing. What? Now look at this pelican right here. He thinks he's going to eat this or something. You want that? I don't think so. <laughs> so what I'll do, when I have a broken rod, this doesn't go in the trash. You cut it off about right here, and then you take this front section and epoxy it in there. And then now you have a perfect four foot long spinning rod for your kids. Nice. That really is, that's what I do with a lot of my broken rods. I think I might have got you again on the size, Holmes. It doesn't count though, because I teased them up there for you. Oh, because it was a gimme? Yeah, so that one's actually mine too. <laughs> so, the, <laughs> you see how that works, right? Yeah, I see how that works. I'll give you that one. <laughs> I think size wise, you might have me. Yeah, that's a good one there. We might have to measure some of these because that's a solid 40 inches if I've ever seen one, if not more. <laughs> we may be a little spoiled. And you're talking about 15 pound braided line on a 4,000 size reel. And this is why right here when people go to look for new tackle, they like to use what guides use. Hey, we're gonna put those uh, reels through the their paces. Mm -hmm. And when they, the 4,000 whoop something like that, doing his job. That's a stud. So another part of these big bull reds gathering around these bait balls, you know, around the bridges and the passes and all that, is not just a feed. That is their spawn. Dang, that's a tank. That's a toad for sure, bro. There's very few ways to get in touch with the true self of the human scene. And one of those ways is through angling. Ready to experience the best riding boat on the market? Isla Mirada Boatworks is revolutionizing the bay boat world, one craft at a time. Simply the purest riding bay boat to ever hit the water. Isla Mirada Boatworks. Performance, speed, perfection.
Upgrade to a Royal American Beach getaway and enjoy free nights, tropical welcome drinks, free beach chairs, discounts at area attractions, and more. With vacation rentals ranging from economy to luxury and hundreds of Panama City Beach condos to choose from, you can stay close to the action or far from every distraction. Just book a room, upgrade. Chasing the Sun has been brought to you by Native Eyewear, built for the backcountry. Florida Fishing Products, fish better, fish Florida. Dulce Vita Tequila. Extra Tough, the original fishing boot. And by Visit Panama City Beach. Another part of these big bull reds gathering around these bait balls, you know, around the bridges and the passes and all that, is not just a feed. That is their spawn. I mean, they are there to feed, but they're there to reproduce too. So we want to really handle these fish with care and get them right back into that school so that they can continue to spawn and give us more and more fish. Oh, there he is. Doubled. Doubled. There we go. Doubled. Got us a double. <laughs> yes, well, well, you got to start the motor to get bit. Not that right. <laughs> <laughs> well, both our lines are just coming through back here. I told Travis, yeah. I said, I think they're just behind here. Oh, yeah, that's a good one there. Dang, if yours is that big, I can't wait to see this one. <laughs> hmm? Dang, that's a tank. That's a toad for sure, bro. Nice redfish. Happy, happy. Hear here in the fall, we're getting close to that spawn if it's not already happening. Yeah, these guys are just showing up around here. Uh, it'll just get better as the fall progresses. We'll have piles of bait start ganging up out deep out here. All right, let's get these tanks back. Oh, I tell you what, they're ready to go too. You feel that water is cool and they are happy. Probably the coolest thing with fishing and hunting or anything at all is that we step out of our environment into their environment be it ducks, deer, fish, you know, whale sharks, amberjack, redfish. It's all predicated on basic maneuvers of life, which are procreation, feed. That's literally all they do. Uh, basically, the spawn starts around the new moon in August and goes through the water temperature dropping to around 60, which could be October, even as late as November. And the males, they'll more or less stay in spawning aggregations in an area that's probably four or five square miles. The females will branch out every seven to 10 days, do a loop, re-row up, and come back in and spawn. When you insert yourself into a situation where you can observe them in their natural environment, it allows us to step away from the chaos and the insanity of the electronic and digital world in which we are a part of and totally disassociated from the cycle of life. So these spawning aggregations, are consistently made up of males and that's what we're catching right now and the females will come in in the dark on the moon drop the row that's how we get more it's fantastic there's very few ways to get in touch with the true self of the human scene and one of those ways is through angling i mean you get to get out on the water and you're actually chasing multiple different species and each one of them has different nuances that allow them to feed based on your presentation and it's not necessarily allowing it's more of coaxing or presenting in a manner that is copacetic with their operations you know you you're more or less a behavioralist when you're an angler or an outdoorsman you're paying attention to your surroundings and your query and how they interact and you know we don't know how anything really works except for trial and error all those ingrained natural operations are gone. And so fishing and angling is one way to get more in touch with the way life is around us. I mean, you become part of the cycle, you're not just observing it. Feisty little booger. Dang! Spots all over one side, just a couple on this. Pair of redfish, what do you say we go ahead and just dump bump. these back? Boom. There you go. 